Let's work on a 1D fluid flow example. Let's say we have a pipe like this, 3 meters long, and the cross-section area is 10 to the minus 3 meters squared, and the permeability of the flow inside of it is 10 to the minus 2 meters per second. And we want to find the nodal potentials and element velocities. The potential at node 1 is 10 meters, and the potential at node 2 is 1 meter. And we want to discretize this uh, pipe into three elements, element 1, element 2, and element 3. They're all at the same length, so L of each element is 1 meter. We know that the simplest matrix of a 1D fluid flow problem is like this, KXXA over L times 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1, let's say 2 by 2, because we have two nodes per element and each node has one degree of freedom. If we put the values for permeability, cross-section, and length, we'll get this final form of the stiffness matrix for each of the elements. Now we have the stiffness matrix for element 1, element 2, and element 3. We have to put them together to find the total surface matrix for the problem. So this one is P1x, this is P2x, this is again P2x and P3x, P3x and P4x. If I write the values for each row, P2x, P3x, and then P3x, P4x, I see that this component and this component refer to the same node. And this component and this component refer to the same node. So when I want to make the big total surface matrix, I have to add this and this, and then I have to add this and this. The rest of the components of the total surface matrix will be zero. So that's why I end up with this matrix. This is a four by four because I have four nodes and one degree of freedom. Again, this is P1x, P2x, P3x, P4x, and this is P1x, P2x, P3x, and this row is P4x. And that's why these two are coming from here and here. Now that I have the surface matrix, I can relate the fluid flow rates of the nodes to the potentials of the nodes. F1x, F2x, F3x, and F4x are the nodal fluid flow rates. P1x, P2x, P3x, and P4x are the nodal potentials. Now I have to apply the boundary conditions and solve for the problem. This is the boundary conditions. We don't know the fluid flow rate at the nodes 1 and 4, but we know the potentials there. However, we don't know the potentials at the interior nodes, but we know that there is no external potential applied to the uh, nodes 2 and 3. So I've written the knowns in green and the unknowns in red. I have four equations and I also have four unknowns, which you can solve to find my four unknowns. If I take the second row, like this, and the third row, and put them together, I know with these equations. These zeros come from the left-hand side, and then 10 to the minus 5 is the, co is the coefficient of the matrix. Then I have minus 10, this is minus 1 times 10, plus 2 times P2x, so this 2 times P2x, minus P3x, which is minus 1, times P3x, and then I have 0 times 1, which is 0. And by multiplying the third row by this vector, I'll have minus P2x, because this is minus 1 and this is P2x, plus 2P3x, minus 1, this minus 1 times 1. Now if I multiply this by a 2 and rewrite the equations, I'll end up with these two equations. And if I add them together, this and this will cancel out, I will end up with this relationship. 12 is equal to P3x, which means P3x is equal to 4. And if I put this value in any of these equations, I will end up with P2x is equal to 7 meters. So finally, I'll end up with the nodal potentials in this problem. Now if I put those potentials in the Darcy's equation, I can find the nodal and or elemental velocities. So I have the kxx and I have the l per element. 
I have the potentials per nodes, I can find the velocities. What's interesting to note is that velocities of all the nodes is the same, which is similar when we have a bar and 1D tension and we want to have we want to find the stress at each cross section and all the stresses are the same if the cross section is constant along the length of the bar as a result the velocity or similarly the velocity of each element is equal to the velocity of the other elements and one final observation is that if I find the local fluid flow rates of each node from this equation. So I have the um, stiffest matrix, I have the local nodal potentials, which is equal to the global ones because the global and local current systems are falling on top of each other. Then I'll find this value for the local nodal forces or local nodal fluid flow rates of the element one. If I add these two together, I'll see that the summation of the fluid flow rate inside element one is zero, which means element one is, is equilibrium. The next thing is to uh, do the same thing for element two. So I have nodes two and nodes three for element two. If I write that, I will end up with these values for the fluid flow rate at nodes two and nodes three. Now if I take a look at this and this, they're basically looking at the same node but attached to different elements. And if I add them together, I see that the summation of the fluid flow rate of nodes, node 1 at two different elements is also 0, which means node 2 is also in equilibrium. So we found an interesting way to find or to solve a 1D fluid flow rate using finite element method.